So I said, it's unfortunate that you people call it gospel. Because gospel simply means good news. I don't hear any good news in this song. The fact that the person is mentioning Jesus does not mean he's singing gospel. Are you under <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, it's, it's funny. When you hear songs like, I'm suffering, oh God, why is it that I'm the only one suffering? Have mercy on you. What, what, what kind of gospel is in that song? <laughs> you are only lamenting over your situation. That's all. And people love that. Are, are you getting it? I told her, I said, look, any song I will play is a song of worship and praise to my God. I don't lament. Some people, you know, you might not be lamenting with words, you might be lamenting with songs, and people are doing it. Because they lack knowledge. So the Bible says, it is wisdom and knowledge that will be the stability of our time. When God begins to break, break you through financially, it is the wisdom that will make you stable in financial prosperity. I mean, it's not like you go up and you come down, you go up. No, you are stable. And when we draw the graph, it goes straight up. It doesn't come down. Because wisdom and knowledge is the stability of our time. And your prosperity is based on that. So it cannot come down. You are prospering by the wisdom of God. You are living in health by the wisdom of God. You are overcoming by the wisdom of God. You are breaking through by the wisdom. So you are stable in breakthrough. You are stable in prosperity. You are stable in going up. It's, it does, it's not like uh, electric current where they will say it flash to it or whatever. No. So wisdom is the stability of our time that is why you you have to you have to desire it more than anything in this world physical education is good secular education is good as long as we are living in this world we need those secular education we need to learn all those things but all those things without god's word amounts to nothing that is why we have professors that are stupid that is why we have phd holders that are thieves that is why we have people that have all the, the, the degrees, and yet they can't even eat food. They are afraid. They are frustrated. The devil is hitting their head. And like I keep telling you, there is nothing you are going to learn that the devil does not know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What are you going to learn that he doesn't know? We are talking of somebody who lived in heaven with God, not by faith, physical. He was there when God was making man. Are you getting the point? And so, what are you going to learn that he doesn't know? When it comes to the Bible, he knows it. The Bible says he believes the word. He believes it. He doesn't have problem believing God because he has lived with God before. He knows who God is. He knows how powerful God is. He knows God cannot lie. He knows God's word is powerful. He knows what God says he will do it. The devil believes God and he trembles. But then, he deceives you not to believe God. <laughs> <laughs> but he himself believes God. He believes God <laughs> with all his heart. Everything God has said about him, he believes it. God has said his time is coming. He knows. He believes that his time is coming because God has said it. But he comes to you and tries to deceive you into thinking that the Bible is not true. It's not real. What you are saying is it's not true. And he believes it. So you have to let the devil know you are smarter than him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So wisdom and stability is, I mean, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our time. We will forever be stable in Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So one thing we have to understand, or one wisdom that I want to open you up today, is our victory in Christ over the devil. Now, when you get the understanding of this, you can dare anything that God puts in your heart. The understanding of our victory in Christ over the devil. Now, you know, before Jesus came, the devil had the authority. Before Jesus came, nobody had authority over the devil. Nobody could could command the devil to do anything. That is why in the Old Testament, we never saw anybody casting out demons. Never. All the anointed prophets and, and, and apostles and all those things that came in the Old Testament, we don't read anywhere anybody cast out demons from anyone. 
Because at that time, nobody had the authority to command the devil to come out of anybody. Are you understanding me? The Holy Ghost will come upon the prophet and he will perform some miracle, but not casting out demons. You understand? When we, we talk about Jeremiah and the Hezekiahs and the Elijah and the Elijahs and all those things, they all did wonderful miracles, but none of them cast out any demon. And so, before Christ came, they were used to being subject to the devil. They were used to a demon possessed person whom every person must run away from. Because there's nothing you can do about it. Nobody had authority over that demon that has possessed the person. So to save your life, just keep your distance. That's all. You know, but then Christ came. And when Jesus came, they saw something different. When Christ came and he began his ministry. <laughs> The Bible says, everywhere he went, demons saw him, and they ran. Either you bow or you run. You know, because now somebody with the authority has appeared. I want you to understand this thing very well. You know, so that you will know the time we are in, and how you have been empowered to take care of the devil. Because in the Old Testament time, they couldn't. Not because we are better off than them, but because at that time, the devil was the one holding the authority. He was the one holding the keys. And you don't command somebody who has authority over you. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. <coughs> So the devil was the one sitting on the throne. And nobody had the power to dethrone him. So he did all that he wanted to do. He had his way with people. He put as many as he wanted in bondage. Wickedness everywhere. Then came Christ. So in the book of Mark chapter 1, from verse 21, the Bible says, and they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Now, you see why they were surprised? They were like, wait a minute. This guy speaks with somebody who has authority. We are not used to that. He doesn't speak like the scribes. He doesn't talk like the religious leaders. He talks like somebody with authority. He speaks like somebody who, with power. He speaks like somebody who is in charge. They were like, who, who is this guy? Why, where from this authority? He doesn't speak like our usual pastors here. He doesn't speak like the religious leaders here. They will come and stand there and read Bible scriptures and say, you know, whatever happens, Accept it because anything that happens, God gave it to you. Naked we came, naked we shall go. That's how they were speaking. But Jesus came. And he said, today, anybody that hears my voice shall not die. They were like, hey, <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> who is this guy? Are you understanding me? Let's go to the next verse. And there, were, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. In the, syna in the church. The devil was so comfortable in the synagogue. A man with unclean spirit. He has been with them only God knows how long. But nobody could dare thank that unclean spirit. Because nobody had authority at that time. So there was this man there. But now, unfortunately for this spirit, the one with authority has appeared. And so now he could not stand his presence in the synagogue. So he cried out. And let's hear what he said in the next verse. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou son of Nazareth, thou Jesus of Nazareth, that art thou come to destroy us? I know thee. 
who died.